Hey guys welcome back to the channel this is a story of what if Naruto mastered Kurama's chakra earlier what if Naruto gained control over Kyuubi chakra. During the month of training for the finals of the Chunin exams what if Jiraiya taught more than summoning watches Naruto takes the whole world by storm with near unstoppable power and unmatched potential but when the chips are down it's all or nothing against hidden threats and godlike enemies will he survive. Before we start thank you for all the support it really means a lot to me don't forget to subscribe and leave a like and check the description for the creator of this great fanfic and also as I said I will be changing the story title to what if Naruto power of the tailed beast so don't forget that let's continue. Chapter 17. Fubar, Disclaimer. Do you have any idea how hard it is to write fanfiction? It's not, I am just incredibly under motivated. I can't believe you're taking us there for this. We can just do this at your house. Stated Hannah as she walked with the rest of the group into the Golden Leaf, an extremely high-class shinobi restaurant that mainly served Jonin. I agree, Naruto Taicho. Even though Tuyuya is hungry, I know many other restaurants that would be more suited to this type of interaction. Stated Shino, who, while often confused by Naruto's antics, didn't see the point in coming to this expensive of a restaurant. Oh don't worry about it. Stated Naruto with a grin. First, you guys have been awesome over the last few missions. Second, this place is perfect for this. And third we have to show our wonderful guests from Kumo a good time. How can we help you all Toto? -o? Naruto. How are you today? Would you like your table? Questioned the hostess as she grabbed the menus. Yes please, though I'm going to need three tables, Danzo will be joining me when he gets here. Stated Naruto as he followed the perky hostess. Why yes sir. Right this way please. The group, including the Kumo Kunoichi, walked up a staircase that lead to the VIP area. Only Naruto had any clue what was going on. The Golden Leaf was, in fact, a shinobi restaurant, every cook and server was a shinobi, active or retired. On top of that, every booth or table has silencing seals put in place by either Yandaimi himself or Jiraiya and everything was chakra proof. Even the Kumo Ninja knew of the extravagant Golden Leaf. Here is your preferred seat Naruto, shall I prepare for Jiraiya-sama as well? Questioned the hostess as she pointed to three tables in the corner of the VIP room, annoyance evident in her voice. No, the waitresses don't need to worry about him today. Just get my team settled in and we'll be good. Stated Naruto with a smile. The hostess nodded before heading off to get a waitress. You guys go ahead and take the table on the right, Sai, you sit with our guests. The team and Sai simply nodded before taking their places. How much money does Naruto have that he is a regular here? Questioned Hana as she watched Naruto sit at the third table alone, his back facing the door and his head back in his scroll. I came here after my first a rank and it nearly cleaned me out. Don't you know? Shithead owns this place. It was left to him by the last owner. He comes here all the time to meet with Jiraiya. Stated to Yuya as she looked over the menu. And the fucking food is so good. I swear they have Akamikus in the kitchen. Actually they do. Stated Choji as he look over at Tuyuya shyly. My aunt and uncle are the head chefs. Man, now I know why you're built so well, you must eat like a goddamn king. Stated Tuyuya, not knowing that saying that an Akamiki is built well was one of their highest compliments. But shithead was right. We all have weaknesses, and had we fought the snake fucker and his butt buddy, we would have been toast. Let's order and get this training thing figured out. At the next table over, Yugito and Samui were wondering what exactly was going on. We haven't even been here for a day and we've been to the fabled Namikaze mansion, had a tour through the village led by one of their newest up-and-coming ninja and now we are at the Golden Leaf. Konoha must really want us to be happy to butter us up this much. Stated Yugito, trying to get a reaction from the stone-faced team sitting at their table. It's pretty cool. At least that Naruto guy is nice enough. Not like those damn Iwa nins. Stated Samui as she leaned back in her chair and looked at the menu. Look at the prices. The cheapest thing is as much as a D rank mission. Do not worry. Naruto san will just get the money back anyway. Stated Sai as he looked over the menu. He may not have emotions, but his taste buds still worked. So he's being reimbursed for us, that's pretty generous if he can bring us here and get paid for it. Stated Samui. No. Naruto-san owns this restaurant. And only shinobi work here. Most diplomatic meetings happen here for the second reason. Stated Sai as he put his menu down and gave a creepy fake smile. 
Even Lord Danzo eats here when he goes out. After the Hokage Tower, clan housing and the defense buildings, this building is more secure than just about anything. Both Samui and Yugido shivered when they heard the man's name. I can see why they call him the darkness of Shinobi. He just feels dark. The entire time I was around him I felt like he was trying to suppress me with his chakra. You seem to be handling Danzo-sama's presence better now, you haven't even flinched since he got here. Stated Sai. Both girls turned to see Danzo sitting across from Naruto. I have not been here in quite a while. Stated Danzo as he lifted the menu. Jiraiya may be an idiot, but he knows how to waste all that money his smut makes. To think, such a genius way to have private conversations was his thinking has always astounded me. Do you have your report yet? Questioned Danzo, his stern exterior hidden behind the menu. Such delicious food here. To think that your overtaking of the ownership has actually increased the value of the meal is impressive. Thanks, but no, I don't have the report done. Stated Naruto sheepishly as he scratched the back of his head. With everything that happened since I got back, I can't help but get overwhelmed. Jonin duties are not to be taken lightly Uzumaki. Try to remember that for your next report. Stated Danzo as he continued to thumb through menu. So I'm off the hook. Questioned Naruto. Why did everyone think Danzo was such a bastard? He seemed like a completely likable guy outside of the defense building. Other than that whole trying to abduct him thing. Yes, Uzumaki, I will not reprimand you for not turning in a report when you yourself were not the lead on the mission. Stated Danzo before he placed the menu down and stared directly into Naruto's eyes. What I am going to reprimand you for is having no grasp of the situation you are attached to. You have not inquired as to why you were called back or on anything involving why Hiruzen was busy, or why the Kumo Kunoichi have been assigned to you. The smile faded off of Naruto's face as he looked back into Donzo's lone eye. I had no time to ask. With other nations ninja in the room it would have been a security risk, you wouldn't have had that pale, creepy, brick wall of emotion tell me and Gigi would have informed me anyway if it was something that important. I suspect the reason they're assigned to me is intimidation. The Nibi Jinchuriki is dangerous. Having me close to her is the best way to stop her quickly. Your cage bush and Uzumaki, you can use them for more than just training. Use your strength for reconnaissance. Right now you could have a henged bush and at that table, or one meeting with Hiruzen, or even one meeting with me. Stated Danzo. Naruto bounced his head on the table. Ah damn it. Why didn't I think of that? Hiruzen and Jiraiya did not train you to be Anbu, and I will not train you to be Root. If you want that respect you used to shout about, you have to earn it. That means going beyond your duty, not skirt-tailing it. Bringing the mood down as he reprimanded the young teen. There's not to make reply, there's not to reason why, there's but to do and die. Stated Naruto before being cut off. Into the valley of death road the 600. Stated Danzo. You have been reading your mother's notes. Neither of understood the meaning behind that poem. You do not know that she spent time under me. Just as Jiraiya and your father did, as well as your pitiful sensei. They were not trained to be drones and neither will you. You are a talented young man that has the ability to change the tide of current affairs. You will need to continue to push yourself past your limits. A long pause plagued the table before two plates of food appeared on the table in front of them. Hiruzen has high hopes for you. You are not just a pawn in this game of chess. Your value is substantially higher. Stated Danzo cutting a chunk off of his steak and chewing slowly while holding eye contact. You do not flinch, yet even my eyes can see the fire that burns so black in your eyes. That damned fire that your father had when he disobeyed his orders. So I'm like my old man, then. Smiled Naruto, saving the fact that he wanted to know why his father would have spent time en route. No. When Minato disobeyed orders it was because they went against his instincts. You're much more like Jiraiya. Stated Danzo with another bite. How? Questioned Naruto. I'm not a pervert. We are all perverts. Are you telling me that you have yet to gaze at the assets of the younger Kumo Kunoichi? Questioned Danzo seriously. Wah. No. Stammered Naruto. Well you should. They are quite a sight. Stated Danzo with a straight face, getting a shocked reaction out of Naruto. I may be old, Uzumaki, but I am still as lecherous as the man I was when I had my first child. Did you think that Hiruzen and I were so different? Naruto simply sat gobsmacked as he stared at the old man. At the table team one sat, 
Hannah had been trying to understand the conversation that her team leader was having with the old warhawk. What did Danzo just say to leave Naruto speechless? You. You're a pervert. Wait, child. First child. Like you actually had children. Questioned Naruto as he stared at the man in front of him. Contrary to popular belief, I do have a feeling or two left. And you just hurt them. Stated Danzo with another bite. And a joke. Who are you? God damn it I swear if you're Jiraiya. Stated Naruto as he reached for his sword. I may be the darkness of Shinobi, but I am still human. Stated Danzo. And yes, children. Three in fact. Though only one still lives. You have no idea the amount of ass you can get when you're the baddest man in the village. Danzo smirked as he looked at the confused Naruto. Back to why I came here today. This morning, the defense building was raided and several prisoners escaped. Enko and Ibiki are incapacitated and Sasuke Uchiha and Mizuki Tuji have escaped and cannot be found. Did Sasuke break out? Questioned Naruto. Not known. Ibiki was dispatched before the first Anbu team responded. Stated Danzo with another bite. Due to the Kumo ninja being close at the time, we are keeping them under watch until Ibiki or Anko recover. That damn snake. That's what he meant when he said that we would be too late. Stated Naruto. Elaborate. He said his secret weapon had secured his next body. I figured he meant that he had found a new one. But it seems that he has regained Sasuke. Stated Naruto with a huff. Or at least a chance to regain Sasuke. From now on, every mission you go on with Jiraiya, you will write the report. Danzo took another bite of steak before pulling out two scrolls and handing them to Naruto. The larger one is the information you will need for the next month. The smaller one is a gift. Should you prove worthy, I shall give you another gift. But for now I must find Hiruzen. Danzo placed his finger on his steak and an instant later the steak was carved into perfect bite-sized cubes. Danzo pulled a small bowl from his robe and dumped the steak cubes into it before getting up. The perfect snack to walk around with. Do not disappoint me, Namikaze. You're not anything like Jiraiya said you are. Stated Naruto under his breath. Yes. I am. Make sure you study that scroll you received from Tsunade. The theory in that scroll will be paramount in your eventual battles. Stated Danzo as he began moving away. I'm an old man, Uzumaki. I can no longer fight on the front lines. How do you know what's in this scroll? Only Shino and myself have looked it over. Hiruzen's older son and my third child spent an arduous amount of time on that scroll, I'd know it anywhere. And with that Danzo disappeared in a vacuum shunshin. Hayuga Estate, Hiyashi. What do you think of your eldest daughter's progress? Questioned one of the clan elders. Hinata has made great strides as of late. Adopting the brutal fist has helped her tremendously and she is already at high genin level with the style. Stated Hiyashi. Within a year, she could match Neji if this learning curve continues. And your youngest. How is she progressing? Hanabi is progressing at the same rate she always has. Though now that she has seen Hinata's strength, she has begun to lose confidence. Stated Hiyashi. Let her train under Neji and all will be well. It may be better for the Hayuga to have a kind soul at its helm. Stated another elder. I'd advise you continue both of their training. Whichever one is a better candidate when the time comes, will be nominated. There is another issue. Stated the third elder. She still holds feelings for the Jinchuriki. Should those feeling bloom into a relationship, it could endear the branch house to her completely. The only problem that would cause would be that we don't know that will happen if she mates with him. For all we know, it could make a powerful strain of Byakugan, or cancel it out. Stated the first again. Beyond that, the boy is very powerful for his age. And we all know his lineage. And the fact that Minato himself joked about our children marrying. Stated Hiyashi with a smile. Maybe I should invite the boy for dinner. Even if nothing comes of it for Hinata, endearing him to the Hayuga cannot be a bad thing. The door to the meeting room opened to reveal an elderly woman. Be careful bringing that boy here. He's too much like him. Grandmother. Why are you wary of him? Surely you know as well as anyone that there is nothing to fear from a properly sealed Jinchuriki. Stated Hiyashi. After his grandfather and mother died, his grandmother had all but kept to herself. It was an extreme abnormality to see her anywhere but the gardens in her room. It is not Kayubi I am worried about Hiyashi. Stated the elderly woman as she raised her cane and silenced an elder that had begun speaking. That boy. 
He reminds me of my foolish first husband. I have seen much in my time Hiyashi. It is not coincidence that he is pulled toward the seat of Hokage, or that he has grown so powerful in such a short time. Will you listen to yourself you old bag? You think Uzumaki is going to turn out like him. The boy is nothing like S, don't you even breathe his name. Shouted the older woman before she composed herself and took a deep breath. Hiyashi-kun. Do what you think is right, but mark my words, Naruto is just like he was at that age. Training field, very good Sakura. I have to say, you're a pretty fast learner. Stated the Nako masked Anbu as she watched the pink-haired girl run around of the small lake. Thank you sensei. Replied Sakura as she continued her exercise. Unknown to Sakura, the Anbu had a vicious smirk behind her mask. She pulled out a few kanai and shouted. Now for your next exercise. Dodge. Hospital, the patient is waking up. Shouted a nurse as she ran out of the room she had been in. Hiruzen appeared before her with a group of Anbu in an instant. It's quite all right, Miss Tanu. We will take it from here. Relieved by the Hokage's kind tone, the nurse excused herself to tend to her other patients. Anbu. Seal the room. Only Kakashi Hitaki and Danzo Shimura may enter. Stated Sarutobi as he moved into the room and motioned the Anbu medic to tend to Ibiki. Saw Sandame Sama. Did the Anbu get there in time? Did I hold them off long enough? Questioned Ibiki as he looked into the Hokage's eyes. Tell me what happened, Ibiki. I would like to hear all of it. Flashback. Anko. Wa. Questioned Anko with a mouth full of food. Chew with your mouth closed. Just because I enjoy your company, doesn't mean that I enjoy watching you try to mulch rice. Stated Ibiki as he sighed. Why are you even here? You're no longer assigned to this department. Well Hyuga boy and Haruno are recovering from the last mission, so I guess I just wanted to say H. Anko's eyes grew wide as she broke into a horrible scream and hunched over the table. Ibiki was at her side in a moment, only to find her curse seal pulsing with chakra. A split second later, Ibiki was thrown against the wall of one of the cells by a burst of chakra. When everything died down, Anko was limp on the floor and two figures stood behind the chair she had been sitting in. Well what luck. Right where we need to be. Stated the shorter, stockier figure. As Ibiki's vision stopped swimming, he recognized they were wearing cloaks to cover their faces. Good. Less work. Dot dot. Big man. The taller man instantly nodded and charged Ibiki, who met him head on and stopped him in his tracks, shocking both of the cloaked men. My, how you've grown, little Morino. How. Do you know, my name. Growled Ibiki as he lifted and threw the taller figure into the wall before closing the distance and swinging at the shorter cloaked man. Still just a bull I see. No matter. Stated the shorter cloaked man before catching Ibiki's fist and countering the incoming kick. After all this time, you've wasted your gifts. Big man. Ibiki felt his world explode in pain as he was forced against the same wall, finding a large, gray forearm across his chest. Die. Shouted the deranged man as he held his hand up to Ibiki's chest, only for it to ripple and morph into an odd cannon. Die. 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 Ibiki used all of his strength to throw the man away from him, only for a blast of chakra to hit his upper arm, tearing off this bicep. Die. 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 Shouted the enraged gray giant as he rammed into Ibiki, smashing him through the walls of the cells and out into the area around the building. Ibiki tried to get up only to find the same cannon hand pointed at him. Die. Jugo. That's enough. Ibiki watched the giant form shift back into his usual cloaked self before running off. Great, now I gotta catch him. Oh well. Come on, little Uchiha, you're coming with me. Stated the second cloaked man as he walked away with Sasuke over his shoulder. Let me go. I'm not going with you. I need to stay here. Shouted Sasuke as he struggled to free himself. Funny. Now let's go. End of flashback. I'm I'm sorry I failed you Hokage-sama, stated Ibiki as he finished his recap. It's alright Ibiki. Get your rest. The Hokage stood still at the bedside of Ibiki, his mind a flurry of thoughts. Anbu. Get Jiraiya in here now to reseal Anko's curse mark. Sir. Not her fault. Stated Ibiki as he fell back asleep, no longer able to maintain consciousness. He's far worse than we thought sir. Stated the medic Anbu. His back is broken in several places, his right lung is punctured and his shoulder blades are fractured. He will recover. 
He's had worse. Stated Saru Tobi as he lit his pipe. Tora. Send Asuma, Kuranai and her team, and Sakura Haruno to my office. Then relive Naruto of his duties with the Kumo ambassadors. Tell Guy he is to be their guide until everything is sorted out. With Team 1 Naruto stood with his team at a reserved training ground, behind him was Sai with the two Kumo escorts, sitting under a tree. Okay team. You all discussed your weaknesses, but there's one thing no one can be good enough at, at least according to Pervy Sage. Stated Naruto, mumbling the last bit. Is it eating? I bet it's eating. Stated Choji. No way, it's gotta be swearing. Stated to Yuya. Collecting forks. Questioned Shino. Marking your territory. Asked Hana, getting an odd look from the rest of the team. What? I'm an Inazuka. We mark what we claim with a scent, whether it's with piss or other means. Like fucking. Stated to Yuya, getting a blush from Choji and Naruto. To Yuya. Shouted Naruto. She's right. That's another way. You're not helping. Shouted Naruto as he pointed indignantly at Hana. God damn it. I meant conditioning. Like working out. You can never be strong, quick, or fast enough. Intercourse would be a great physical exercise. Stated Shino before having to dodge a chop from the Kubikiribocho. That's it. Start running. Shouted Naruto as he began chasing his teammates around with Cage Bushin. It's bad enough Danzo is a pervert, now my whole team is. Under the tree, Yugito and Samui were having trouble believing what they were seeing. Or all leaf ninja so. Dot dot. Odd. Samui, be respectful. Though I agree that this isn't exactly what I expected from a training exercise. Stated Yugito. It's a bit, eccentric. Naruto was taught by Kakashi Hitaki and Jiraiya of the Sanin. Eccentric is a common property for that line of teaching. Hmm. With teaching like that, he would be rather strong. Stated Samui. Maybe I should spar with him. I would advise against it, Samui. He doesn't seem to be the type to hold back. With Tsunade Tsunade stood over Ibiki as she ran another diagnostic. Man, first that Lee kid and now this. I remember when you were just a little kid. Tsunade was pulled out of her thoughts when a thump was heard in the hallway. She turned to see Danzo in the hallway. She noticed that a sad frown had replaced his usually stern exterior. How is he Tsunade? Questioned Danzo as he stepped into the room and closed the door. Will they be able to recover? Tsunade just nodded. Enko will be fine after the pervert fixes her seal. Ibiki is another story. He's pretty broken up, if he wasn't such a bear he might have died from his injuries. Danzo moved to the window and looked out into the village. Will he recover? Will he be able to resume his duties? You don't have to act like a dick about it, Danzo. I know what your relationship is to Ibiki. Stated Tsunade as she placed his chart in the slot at the end of the bed. I'll give you some privacy. His meds should wear off soon, he will be coherent until his pain medication kicks back in. And with that, Tsunade left the room, closing the door behind her. Tsunagara stood before the council with a dull expression on his face. They knew what he wanted, and he couldn't stand to wait on their answer any longer. Well, will you grant my request? Gee Gara, why do you want to become an Anbu? You're royalty and you've only ever been able to work with your siblings, who won't be joining you. Stated Izibo, the brother of the elderly siblings and a master swordsman. I was beaten by Uzumaki. He too is a Jinchuriki, but he doesn't fight like me. I wish to be able to fight without my biju as he does. I want to be a shinobi, not a weapon. Stated Gara with the most emotion in his eyes that most of the council had ever seen from the young man. I say we let him. It's not like he's going to die. Stated a younger counselor, earning a few gasps from the others in the room. We are at a disadvantage. The Kayubi, Hachibi, Yanbi, and Sanbi Jinchiriki are all remarkable shinobi that can become tide changers in a battle. Gara may be unstoppable in the desert, but he has been beaten before. Albeit by another Jinchiriki, Naruto Uzumaki beat Gara using techniques that skilled Jonin around the world can use. Can we even use Gara as an Anbu? No Jinchuriki has ever been an Anbu before. Stated an elder councilman. That's not true. Stated Chio, the sister of the elder siblings. The last Kayubi Jinchuriki was an Anbu by the name of the Red Death. A collective gasps followed the accusation. Kashina Uzumaki. Yes. Tsunade's first apprentice was the Kayubi Jinchuriki. Stated Chio. Gara, I approve your request. 
You may join Anbu if you pass the testing without losing control. Report tomorrow. Emotion crept into Gara's eyes as he nodded and left the room. It all makes sense. Naruto may be her son. But who in her age group had blonde hair? If Kashina is his mother, only one person could be that boy's father. With Danzo. Danzo stood above Anko's bed, his good hand holding hers. My, my, little Anko. I should have killed Orochimaru before he marked you. He watched her shallow breathing, imagining her reaction if she were to wake up to him. I tried to keep you both safe in the interrogation department. I never thought you would still be under Orochimaru's influence. Not her fault. Not strong enough. Danzo looked to Ibiki, a broken grin stretching the large mont's face. Enko really doesn't know, does she? Flashback. Danzo-kun, he's beautiful. Stated a purple-haired woman with deep brown eyes. Yes, he is, Karuna. He will be strong like his father, and brilliant like his mother. Stated Danzo with a proud smile. I love you Karuna. Me losing my eye was the best thing that ever happened to me. I'd like to think I could have caught you even if I didn't have to heal you after you and Hiruzen fought the Rakage and Jinchuriki. Her brown eyes bored into his lone eye. What shall we name him? He will need a strong name. Hiru. After Hiruzen. Stated Danzo. But for now he will take your last name. I have far too many enemies. Hem. Hiru Mitarashi. Sounds perfect. Flashback end, wipe that grin off of your face. You remind me of your father. Stated Danzo with a scowl. There was a tense silence before Danzo walked over to Ibiki's bed and sat in the chair beside it. My men have reported that Idate is doing fine. He's very fast now, nearing Chunin. Ibiki just nodded and closed his eyes. Thank you for watching over him. I watch over all my family. Get some rest my grandson, you need it. Hokage's office Hiruzen smiled as he looked over the assembled ninja. The current generation to surpass the old. Toborama sensei, you would be proud. Before the Hokage stood Ino Yamanaka, Asuma Serutobi, Hinata Hayuga, Kiba Inazuka, Sakura Haruno, Meita Gai, Tenten Higarashi, and a still injured Rock Lee. Lee Kun, has Tsunade not performed the surgery yet? Questioned Hiruzen, knowing that the surgery most likely got pushed back due to the incident with Ibiki. Not yet Hokage-sama. I am scheduled for tomorrow at noon. Exclaimed Lee happily. Good. Now as for why you are all here, due to recent events, Ino Yamanaka will be placed with Team 8. Asuma, you are being reassigned to the Department of Homeland Security. Sakura, you are to fill in on Team Guy. Stated Hiruzen sagely. Kurinai has been informed of this development. Ino, if you would like to follow Hanada and Kiba to their training ground to get to know each other better, Tenten, please help Lee Kun get back to the hospital. Dot dot quote. The five genin got the hint and left, leaving Sakura, Gai and Asuma in the office alone with the Hokage. Now that you're alone, Sasuke Uchiha was abducted last night from his holding area in the defense building. Ibiki confirmed he was taken, that he had not left voluntarily. Gai nodded grimly while Asuma grunted. Sakura however went wide-eyed. Sasuke-kun was kidnapped. Does Naruto know? Naruto-kun has been informed. I have an Anbu going to his team now to retrieve some dignitaries he is hosting. Stated Sarutobi before looking back to Gai and Asuma. If asked, tell the truth. Sasuke was preparing for another meeting with Ibiki when the defensive building was compromised and he was abducted. Do you think Kumo is behind it? With their Jinchuriki here, it would be easy enough to sneak in a small force. Stated Asuma. I do not believe Kumo to be single-handedly involved in this. But that doesn't rule it out. Stated the elder Serutobi. Guy, you will be taking over the guard of the dignitaries. Naruto has no experience in this field and Danzo should have never assigned him. With Jiraiya, damn it pervert. I'm gone for two minutes and you're harassing the nurses. Shouted Tsunade as she approached her old teammate, who was leaning against the counter in the nurse's station. For your information, Haim, I'm grabbing Anko's chart. Stated Jiraiya, before leering at Tsunade. Though I'd much rather grab a piece of you. Shut up pervert. Dismissed Tsunade. And you could have just come find me, I'm the one that wrote up the chart. But then I couldn't discreetly seduce this beautiful receptionist. Stated Jiraiya. If that was discreet, then I don't want to see you actually try. Stated the nurse. Oh but my dear, if I cannot use my words to properly describe the beauty that shines upon you, then what am I to do? Quipped Jiraiya with a sincere smile. 
Damn it, pervert, let's go. Stated Tsunade as she grabbed the toad sage by his ear and dragged him away. It's bad enough when you drag me into your antics, stop flirting with my staff. Ow ow ow. Not the good lobe. Team 1 Samui stared at the blonde Konoha nin that happened to be their target, and not for the first time, she had her doubts about the mission. First, was the fact that the blonde had been literally throwing the fabled Kubikiribocho around like it was a normal katana for roughly the last half hour with no signs of even slowing down, pointing to tremendous strength and stamina. Second, was the fact that he had taken a hell of a beating from his teammates, from the Aburami's inventive ways of deploying the Kikachu, to the Akamichi and red-headed girl's tandem attacks, hell, the guy blocked, blocked, a four-fang Gatsuga with that giant sword of his. Yugito wasn't doing much better. Her eyes were having trouble understanding what she was seeing most of the time, let alone believing it. The reports state that he had just recently been promoted to special janin, usually that would point to being fairly balanced at chunin level with exceptional skills in a few arts. The supposed son of the Yondaimi Hokage seemed to be the opposite. Other than his Kenjutsu form, which was solid, but nothing special, and his Genjutsu which from what she had seen was terrible, he seemed to be at least high chunin or higher in just about everything. Though she had yet to see his pure taijutsu without the kubikiribocho in his hands, and he seemed to be rather reserved in his jutsu usage. Sai was just watching the team, his secondary mission was to observe Team 1 and ensure that their training was up to Danzo's expectations. An Anbu appeared near Team 1 and whispered something to Naruto, who nodded before the Anbu turned to walk to the Kumo Kunoichis. Hokage-sama requested you come to his office now. Your new liaison will be assigned after your meeting with him. Both Samui and Yugito nodded before the Anbu grabbed their shoulders and the three of them disappeared. When the chakra smoke cleared Sai too had disappeared. Thank God that creepy fucker left. Stated to Yuya. Weirdo kept looking at us like we were livestock. Who was he anyway? He seemed like he was bored being assigned to them. Stated Choji. Never mind that. Stated Naruto. Now that the warm-up is over, we can start training. Warm-up. We just spent two hours fighting you. How is that the warm-up? Questioned Hannah, her three dogs sitting patiently behind her. Oh yay, you guess don't have my stamina. Stated Naruto, the assembled group, minus Shino, all face faulted. Oh god, he is an idiot. Thought to Yuya as she pulled herself up. I got my ass kicked by an idiot. Hannah wasn't doing much better. Okay, so he is human after all. I was beginning to think he was some kind of superhero with how good he is at everything. Bananas are a good source of potassium. Buzz. Interesting. Shino seemed unaffected by his squad leader's antics. Shika was right, outside of fighting, Naruto is an idiot. Thought Choji before looking at Tuyuya. She could eat with me anytime. I guess if you're all too tired you can split up and work on theory. Stated Naruto as he scratched the back of his head. To the library, one week later Naruto, dressed in his standard janin garb, Kubikiribocho sealed in a scroll, walked down the near-empty streets that matched the setting sun in the land of fire. It had been a few days ago that he had been invited to dinner at the Hyuga estate, and he still couldn't wrap his mind around the little girl that has extended the invitation. Flashback, are you Naruto Uzumaki? Questioned a small, yet mature, voice behind Naruto as he walked down the road. Naruto spun around and looked around before he heard a sigh that emanated from the small girl before him. Are you talking to me? Once again the girl sighed. Yes. My father, Lord Hiyashi Hayuga, would like to invite you to dinner this Monday. Do you accept? Wait. I thought Hinata was Hiyashi's daughter. Questioned Naruto, his eyes widening when he saw her grimace at the name. Yes, she is my older sister. Stated Hanabi with a light tone of anger in her voice as she subconsciously rubbed her shoulder. Do you accept the invitation? Huh. Oh yes, I will attend. Jiraiya had beaten it into him during his time in Wave that if a clan head invites you to dinner, or anything for that matter, it's best to go to it. When should I arrive and what type of clothing? So he's not a total idiot. Interesting. It will be a casual guest dinner. Your uniform will suffice. Dinner starts at 7, be there at 6.30, stated Hanabi. I still don't see what Hinata sees in this guy. Sure, he's a Jonin and beat Neji, but he's an imbecile. All right then. See you then Hanabi. Stated Naruto as he turned around and began walking away. Hanabi turned herself before a thought dawned on her. Wait a minute. How did he know my name? 
End flashback. I wish I could get Ba Chan's or Gigi's help with this. I know I'm going to make a total as is that Danzo. Thought Naruto as he moved through the streets. Sure enough, the seemingly crippled Warhawk stood about 50 feet down the road, slowly moving toward him. When they finally met up, Danzo turned and walked alongside the young blonde. Do not be anxious. Hiyashi wishes to meet you in person as he sees you as a viable candidate to ally with. Kinda hard to do when I'm eating dinner in their compound. Stated Naruto. And what are you doing here? You're not helping me feel better. Will you shut your trap? I'm trying to give you advice. When you approach anyone, do so deliberately and with confidence. You're going to need to be respectful in this situation until Hiyashi allows you to be comfortable. Also, the youngest of his daughters, Hanabi, is incredibly inquisitive. Let her observe you as she wishes and she will be a non-factor. Pausing to take a deep breath, Donzo's good hand lashed out to cover Naruto's mouth. Quiet. Hiyashi is patient, but appreciates discreet directness. If you treat the branch members like peers, you gain favor with Hanada and Hiyashi, but lose points with Hanabi and the elders. Hanada is your ticket to being allies with the Hayuga. Until recently, she has struggled with her fighting skills. She is growing formidable with her taijutsu and with some assistance on your part she would make a great addition to your team when Inazuka eventually takes over a tracking team. What is the point of you helping me? I know you've wanted me to be your weapon forever, hell you sent Anbu after me. Why, after all of this, are you actually trying to help me? Am I no longer a pawn in your plans? Questioned Naruto heatedly. Your presence on the board never ended, it was your value that has been altered. Now lose the temper before you go into that dining room. Commanded Danzo before he began walking away. Don't make the mistake of trusting a Hayuga at their word. Once is enough for two lifetimes. Ten minutes later, Hayuga estate. The table was already set by the time Naruto was led into the dining room. Hiyashi sat at the head of the table while Hanada sat to his left, with Hanabi next to her and Neji across from Hanabi. Hiyashi motioned for Naruto to take the place across from Hanada, which put him on the right side of Hiyashi. As Naruto moved to sit down and thanked Heishi for inviting him, Hanada's blush grew increasingly red. So he is still her weak point. Interesting. Thought Neji as he began to devise a scheme to win his next spar with his cousin. Thank you for having me Hayuga-sama. Stated Naruto kindly as he sat down. Thank you for coming, and Hiyashi-sama will do. We are both Jonan and I do not expect so much formality from the young man who has helped my family out. Stated Hiyashi, getting a shocked look out of most of the table. But first, as I'm sure you know, the Rakage will be visiting next week. I have a favor to ask of you. Hope you liked it, actually, I don't. I hope you hate it so bad you all leave a bunch of reviews. Please have liked it, just kidding do what you like otherwise it will be troublesome. Thanks for listening I hope you guys liked it don't forget to subscribe and leave a like for more what ifs and support the author, see you guys in the next video.